Hey, Fred Lamb here, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the step-by-step -step Facebook ad setup for beginners. Now, most importantly, this is the 2017 way to setting up your Facebook ad. So for those of you listening or watching this video training right now, regardless if you are starting new or you are already advertising on Facebook, this may be one of the most important video that you are going to watch. Now, my ultimate outcome from this video is for you to really understand about Facebook ads and for you to actually see success with Facebook advertising. Facebook advertising is definitely the most inevitable advertising source right now on the internet. Regardless if you are having a local business, a mom and pop shop, a retail store, an online store, an e-commerce store, a digital publishing business, an affiliate marketing business, or even a lead generation business, you need to actually set up your Facebook ads. But let's face it. Majority of the information online, some of them are outdated, and in fact, some of them may be teaching it wrong. So today, I actually wanna share this video training with you to actually help you kickstart your Facebook ads the correct way. Now, before we go into the video training, I just have a screenshot to share with you, all right? The reason why you want to listen to me is take a look at this. This is just one of my ad account. I have numerous ad account. And this single ad account already spent well over a million dollars in the last six months. Now, again, I'm showing you this not to impress you, but to impress upon you. Because I am able to make a positive ROI on this $1.1 million ad spend right on Facebook. And I actually want to hand you the quick blueprint on how you can start today. So the things that you're about to learn are things that are tested, proven, and things that I actually are generating a positive ROI with. So let's not wait longer. Let's actually dive right in. So what you'll learn in this video training is number one, the complete Facebook ad overview. You actually need to know the exact overview, especially for anyone that is starting new with Facebook advertising, you need to know the structure, what it is, and how it works. Then I'm gonna go ahead and explain the 11 marketing objectives within Facebook. Now, there are a lot of marketing objectives. 11 is a lot, considering one advertising network. And your goal is to actually define the correct marketing objectives for your campaign so you basically tell Facebook exactly what your outcome is when you're advertising with them so you can maximize their system, their algorithm, and their multi-billion dollar platform. Number three, I'm actually gonna show you over my shoulder, step by step, on how to create a powerful Facebook ad that can yield result. Last but not least, I'm gonna review the number one targeting method for any new ads that you are going to create or any products that you wanted to sell. Now, in this video training, it's actually gonna be very, very different from the ones that I have been doing. All the old ones, I've been doing PowerPoint presentations, but this one, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit different. We're gonna do it more interactive and making it more in a way where you can take notes while I'm actually going through this. So you'll see that this video training is very, very different from anything else that you have seen. So without waiting further ado, I'm actually going to go right into Facebook right now to talk about the 11 marketing objectives first. But anyways, before we do that, my bad, I actually have to talk about the review. So I'm gonna bring up my scribble pad. So that's why I'm saying this is a very different video training that you'll ever see, um, especially those of you who are just recently following me on YouTube or Facebook. So this is basically obviously a digital whiteboard so you can see. Now, when you advertise on Facebook, you need to understand the structure of how Facebook advertising works before you even create an ad. Because if you don't know how it structures or how it works, then for you to maximize the system, it's gonna be very slim, all right? So when it comes to Facebook, there are actually three levels in the system. The first one is basically what we call the campaign level, all right? Now, what the campaign level is, is that in this level, here is where you choose your marketing objective, all right? So basically what your outcome is, so define, your objective, your outcome, I should say, your outcome, okay, in this one. So let's say for an example, if you're selling a physical product, then obviously you want Facebook to optimize your ad based on the purchase of your product. And under the campaign level, you need to understand one thing. 
you want to advertise one funnel or sales funnel at a time. At a time. All right, excuse my nice uh, writing. So with that, let's say that if you are selling a pen, right? A pen is gonna be in that campaign. You don't wanna sell a pen and then a pencil and then eraser in that same campaign. You wanna sell one item or basically have one sales funnel per campaign. Now, once you have the campaign level, this is basically first part. The second part is basically your ad set. Now, what an ad set really is, is defining your targeting, all right? so who you want to actually see your ad, your targeting. So let's say that if you are advertising a survival product, obviously you wanna go after men that are interested in uh, survival or interested in hunting, camping, etc., etc. So this level is basically you defining what targeting or who you want to reach for your ad. And within that ad set, the next level is basically number three, is the at level, all right? Now, under the at level, what it is is very, very simple. What is the marketing message or your product message that you want? So your advertising message, okay? I'm gonna put an at message. And this at level basically triggers the ad when someone actually within the targeting that you actually wanted to reach. So for an example, let's say that you wanna go after the hunting market, so whenever anyone is actually expressing interest in the hunting market, what Facebook will do is then Facebook will show all the ads within your ad sets to that specific targeting within your ad set. So you need to know that there are basically three levels. Campaign is really defining what your outcome is, regardless if you want a lead, if you want likes, if you want um, a purchase, or if you want a webinar registration, you actually define it in the campaign level. Then number two, it's gonna be your ad set level. In the ad set level, obviously there, that's where you define your targeting, who you want to actually reach, who you want to actually see your ad. Then number three is your ad level. So within the targeting, who, what message, or how does your ad look like, or what do you want to serve with them? So when it comes to setting up your Facebook ad, obviously you need to make sure that you understand this flow. This flow will never get changed. It is like this. Even in Google, it is actually the same flow from campaign to ad set to ad level. Obviously, inside Google, the terminology used is very, very different. But today, we're going to be just covering about Facebook. So here, you need to understand the structure of a Facebook ad. So once you know that, then basically, let's define the marketing objective, right? The campaign level is basically what you want Facebook to do optimize your ad based on your outcome. That's the ultimate goal. And that's the beauty about Facebook ad nowadays is because Facebook has created an algorithm for these 11 marketing objectives. So when you define your marketing objectives clearly to Facebook, Facebook will use their algorithm and their system to serve their ads to the right people within your targeting segment. So within this, there are 11 different marketing objectives. Now I can tell you for a fact that a lot of these can seriously be ignored, um, but I will still cover what they are. Now I'm actually gonna turn this into a desktop so you can actually see me writing on top of it while I'm talking about it. So when it comes to brand awareness, okay? Brand awareness are basically getting likes, getting like campaign done. Now, when you're running a brand awareness campaign, this is basically something that I would encourage you to run if you have a brand new Facebook account. If you have a brand new Facebook account, what a lot of people are actually getting into or troubles that they're getting into, especially if you are outside of the United States or if you are outside of the first tier country, which is like United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, etc. When you advertise on Facebook, Facebook will sometimes be a little bit afraid if you are using a fraudulent credit card or not. So they want to make sure that they can actually get money from you when you advertise. So if you have a brand new account, I would highly suggest you to run a brand awareness uh, campaign. So basically a like campaign going after your niche for seven days in a row, okay? For seven days in a row at $5.
So basically, you're just get buying likes. That's what you do. Now, your long-term goal is to never buy likes. But if you need to kickstart a new account, you would always want to set up a seven-day, $5 per day like campaign so that Facebook can actually bill you and they feel comfortable on letting you advertise on their platform, all right? Now, the next one is actually local awareness. Now, local awareness are basically for people that have a local business. And these are basically businesses that just want to get attention, all right? Now, if even if you're running a local business, I would even ignore local awareness because you're ultimately just paying for people that are within the geographic location, like a radius, like a 25-mile radius, with your the, the, the place that you set to actually see your ad. I'll be honest. I would not run a local awareness campaign, even if you are having a local shop, all right? So I would actually take this out. You don't want to run this. The next one is the reach. Now, reach is, again, something that you would want to actually ignore, especially if you're running a small business, if you're running an e-commerce store, or even if you're basically running a lead generation campaign. What a reach has really done is to basically get people to see your ad. That's it. See your ad. And that's it. So Facebook won't basically do anything else. They will just surf your ad and just get eyeballs to it. This reach method works for like large corporations who want to actually brand their campaign. So let's say like Coca-Cola or Doritos or Volkswagen. That's what they want, right? They want eyeballs. But for you as a direct advertiser and as an internet entrepreneur, you can actually simply ignore the reach. Now let's look at consideration, all right? On the consideration side, you have traffic, which is the first one. Now, what traffic really is, is that you are basically defining your marketing objectives on wanting Facebook to get people to click on your link to go outside of Facebook. So what Facebook really do is that when you advertise with traffic, then what Facebook will do is that they will look within your targeting who will most likely click off of Facebook to go into an article to read something. So that's what link click really is. And that's sorry, that's what traffic really is. Now, post engagement is the next one. It's, I call it the PPE campaign. A lot of people call it a PPE campaign. So it's uh, post per engagement. So with this, you're basically wanting to have a viral content going out into the market. So you want people to like, share, comment, and even click on the link that is within your post. So when it comes to actually getting clicks directly to your website and your goal is just directly get clicks to your website, I would actually ask you to use the engagement rather than getting the traffic, okay? Now, one of the best thing to use when you're using your engagement or the strategy that you wanted to use is really running a retargeting campaign based off of your post engagement ad. So when people are actually sharing, liking, yada, 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 and when people actually click on the article to go to your website, well, guess what? When they go to your website, you can actually put a pixel in place to run retargeting and run a direct response ad. So you're basically casting out a wider net with the PPE campaign to actually get people to share your content, to get people outside of your reach from your ads, and then simply retarget them with a conversion ad. All right, so that's what it is. Now, app install is the next one. So if you are running a uh, a app company, so if you have an app on App Store or even an app on Google Play, this is what you want it to do. So with the app install, what it does is that it can link to your app store, and when people actually click on it, they will actually then be brought into the app store to actually download the app. Now, some of the big companies like Angry Bird, um, like, um, Clash of Clan and all those other big, big, big gaming mobile companies, they love using app installs because at the end of the day, there's so many traffic on Facebook and they're just paying like less than a buck per install, but they make a lot of money afterwards. So for any of you that are running a mobile app company, this is something that you want to look at. Now, the next one is video views. Video views is one of the most interesting marketing objectives of all. So what you're basically doing is that you're paying Facebook to show your ad based on view, okay? So all you want is basically video views. And Facebook will actually optimize the first three seconds for you. So they actually define as someone that really read or watched a video is the first three seconds. So what Facebook will do is that when you go ahead and choose a consideration or your marketing objectives at video views, then Facebook will actually help you get people to watch your video and people that will most likely watch the video be served with your ads, all right? 
Now, the last one is basically lead generation. Lead generation is one of the, uh, out of all of these, is one of the most recent update that Facebook has with their marketing objective. I have a video um, fully released inside my YouTube channel, which you can watch about all about lead generation. So I'm not going to cover a lot of details about lead generation today because I have a full video and tutorial on how to actually set up a lead generation ad, what it is, etc., etc. So go watch it. All right. Um, I'll drop a link right here. Go watch it. If you want to learn, go watch it here. If you wanted to learn, all right, I should have a link over here right now. Go watch it if you want to learn more about lead generation. Now, let's look at conversion, all right? Conversion is actually one of the most important part when you're advertising on Facebook. The first one is actually conversions. Now, in order for you to maximize the conversions, and out of these conversions, there are different events that you can optimize based off of, and we call them the standard event. Now, again, before you actually use conversions, you need to make sure that you install your Facebook pixel, okay? You have to install your Facebook pixel. And one of the most important thing is that you need to have your standard event pixel, okay? Standard event pixel. So basically, not only are you installing a pixel, but you wanna basically tell Facebook what is happening with those people that goes on your website, right? If someone actually bought a product, then you wanna actually have a purchase event to fire back to Facebook to tell them that, hey, this ad generated the sale, and this is the cost, and this is how much um, revenue has been generated. There are things like lead, there are add to carts, there are initiate checkout. There is a whole bunch of standard events. But what's most important for you to fully utilize this is again, install your Facebook pixel and basically put in the standard event correctly. Do not confuse the standard events because if that if you've done that, then you will confuse the Facebook pixel and really maximize their algorithm. Now, with that being said, if you are in Shopify or if you have a Shopify store, it's actually a very easy setup for you to get the standard event. All you have to do is just copy and paste your pixel ID into Shopify and you're ready to go. Now, if you're not using Shopify, you need to make sure that you install your standard event correctly. Now, one of the things that I always do and I always have success with is always using conversions. And most importantly, to tell Facebook to go after the purchase conversion. Because I obviously want to tell Facebook that, hey, I'm advertising on your network because my ultimate outcome and my number one goal advertising is because I want to generate a sale. And if Facebook knows that and they actually have enough pixel data, Facebook pixel would come become very, very smart and help you really optimize your campaign to get more people to actually buy your products. All right. So purchase is very important. And I always, always, always set up and always, the first thing I do is always set up a conversion ad. Now, the next one is basically product catalog sales. So if any of you that are running an e-commerce store, a product catalog sales is basically running a dynamic retargeting ad. You can actually create a product feed to Facebook with your Shopify account, with your um, e-commerce store or whatever. What it does is that when a customer or a prospect goes to your website, and they click on, let's say, a product that sells a pen, but they did not buy. Then they're still on your website and they look at a pencil, but they left. Then what happens is that you can run a product catalog sales retargeting ad to show to those people the pen, the pencil, and other products that they may be interested in. And Facebook will actually help you determine which product will most likely these people will be buying. So they actually track all the um, activity and behavior on your e-commerce store based on your product feed, and they will show the products that they have seen before, but they did not buy. So it's a very effective tool when you're running an e-commerce store. Now, last but not least is store visit. So for store visit, it's very different from local awareness. Why? Because you have two definitive role or definitive objective that can be tracked. One is a call and one is getting a direction. So again, the reason why I'm telling you that if you're running a local mo uh, mom and pop business or a retail business, I don't suggest you to run a local awareness campaign. I would rather have you run a store visit. So with the store visit, what you can really, really do is that you can basically have an ad that says, call now. And then when someone click on it, it will automatically dial from a mobile phone calling your the, the number that you actually have set. 
The direction is another one, right? If the person is actually walking around and they're looking for a pizza store and you're bidding around the 25 mile radius around your shop of a pizza shop, and when people actually wanted a pizza, they can actually click on it and walk to your store and actually buy the product. So these are the 11 marketing objectives within Facebook right now. But out of all, okay, I would tell you for a fact that you always, always, always want to pay attention and put all your money and invest all your money into conversions. Because the reason why a lot of people are getting so much success on Facebook is really because of the conversions and Facebook being really, really smart on creating the entire platform based on results. But again, you need to define exactly what the results are going to be. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the next realm right now. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna choose a conversion ad, right? And you wanna basically name it to whatever you want. Um, in this case, onwashcount.com, one of the websites that I do a lot of uh, research on for physical product, I recently discovered a product, and I'm gonna show you what it is. It's a seven-figure product. And I'm pretty confident to say that this product can sell very, very well on Facebook. But again, obviously there are a lot of people that are gonna be watching this video, so it may dilute um, all the sales and everything, but it's fine. I would actually give away a seven-figure product right on the spot right now to really see your guys' success. So it is under um, Home and Garden. I remember is that. And to be more specific, I need to go to US, Home and Garden. And then where is that product? I'm just gonna wait for it to load. This product over here, right? A tactical police SWAT heavy duty LED charger. It's selling for $10.99 free shipping. Past sales, 100,000, 104,000. And if they're selling it for 11 bucks, this is already a million dollar product right here. Guess what? You can actually find this on um, a lot of basically drop shipping website like AliExpress. You can actually get this for like three or four bucks and really sell it. So in this case, let's do this as an example. Let's say that we're gonna be selling a police SWAT uh, uh, LED light. And let me just do a quick check to show you guys that there is a tactical LED flashlight. Right, right here. So it's only like $5.41. So there are a lot of them. I, out of all these, I love this one. Um, but there are ones that are even cheaper. And I can tell you for a fact, right? This quality isn't as great as this one over here. Like this one is so much brighter, so much nicer. So let's say that we're gonna basically sell this one over here. So what we will do is very simple, all right? So you basically have this product all ready to sell on your store and you wanna go after the purchase. So we're gonna just call this the tactical flashlight conversions, all right? Click on continue. Now, when you aren't on here, like I said earlier, there are something called the standard event conversions, okay? You want to tell Facebook specifically what event or what activity you want to actually have Facebook to optimize your ad base of. of. So here we're going to choose purchase and always go after purchase, all right? Now, you will see different colors. Um, I'm going to exit this and you'll see. Red really means that um, it is actually installed but they're not really getting information yet you also have gray which is basically inactive so if you even have a red and if you have already installed your conversions um it's fine okay you can still run it just go with that next we're gonna go here okay we're gonna skip custom audiences because it's a little bit advanced but here's the something that you need to pay attention which is location all right when you're going after location, there are several mistakes that a lot of people make online right now. They leave this by default, everyone in this location. But the problem is, if you advertise to everyone in this location, what's gonna happen is that you are actually going to show your ads to travelers. So I'm in Canada. If I were to actually advertise in the United States, this is what's gonna happen. When I go into the United States for an event, if I'm speaking at an event or if I'm going to a mastermind or if I'm basically uh, meeting up with partners, when I go to the US, I will still see your ad, but I'm actually not f living in US. I'm just traveling in US. But what are the chances of me actually buying a product when I'm traveling? It's like zero. And I guarantee you, most of you right now will not even buy a product or go through a sales funnel if you are traveling right now. 
So what you wanted to do is change the default settings into people who live in this location. So that way that you know that people are basically at their hometown, they will basically do a lot more stuff like going through a sales funnel, going to a webinar registration, buying a product with their credit card, etc., etc. Now, the second thing that I see a lot of people do that is a very big mistake is adding different locations all within the same asset, like adding Canada, adding United Kingdom. You absolutely do not want to do that, okay? You want to go after one country at a time. At the end of the day, you want data to tell you the story, and you want instant data to tell you if that location is actually working for you or not. So with that, you also make sure you want to go after one country at a time. Then we're going to look at age and gender. Now, with age and gender, you can actually leave it by default. Facebook will actually take the data that they are getting from your ad and help you serve your ads to the right age and gender. But it does take a couple days in order for Facebook to be smart enough to know who is responding to your ad and who is not. So if you already know your niche, if you already know your market audience, then you actually want to set the age in here. So for me, as a tactical flashlight, and I actually um, been running in the survival space several years ago, and I know that space very, very well, I know for a fact that majority of the people are going to be 30 plus men that are going to most likely buy this product, all right? So I'm just going to cut um, the chase right away and not really waste my money on spending on places that I know that um, the gender or the demographic that's not going to respond to the ad. So I'm going to go after 30 to 65 plus gender. Next is languages. Again, I've seen a lot of people that ignore this section over here. For me, what I would do is you will always want to go after English all. Let's face it, right now, in the United States, in Canada, in the entire world right now, it's a multicultural environment. Just like my mom, okay? She doesn't know English. Well, she can speak, like, basic, but she can't even read English properly. But if she goes on Facebook, and she, majority of her stuff is all in Chinese, and you're serving an English ad to her, chances are for her to respond is, like, zip. It's nothing. So you don't want to waste money on that. You want to actually go after people that will only speak English or that can read English. So that way that you are basically narrowing down and focusing your ad on the market that you basically will respond to what your message have to be. Now the next section is the detailed targeting. This is absolutely something that you need to know. In targeting, it's either make or break. That's what it is, okay? The targeting either make or break. So for you, you need to make sure that you set the right targeting and really test the targeting to see if it is the targeting that is not working or if it's the product that is not working. At the end of the day, there are a lot of times where the product does sell, but the targeting is just not resonating with that product. So for you, you actually want to use a $5 per day budget to test the targeting. Now, Obviously, when it comes to targeting, here's something that you wanted to know and you wanted to write down. When you are just beginning to actually advertise on Facebook, if you have a new product, if you have a new service, etc., etc., you never want to go after 1 million plus audience size, okay? Right now, this audience has like 60 million right now. Your goal is to get the number to around 200K to around 600K. Okay, it has to be less, sorry, less than one mil. Do not go crazy and start basically going after a super big audience size. You want to go after smaller than one mil. The best number to be at is around 200K and 600K. But let's face it, let's face one thing. When you're advertising on here, a lot of people, let's say that if we're running that tactical flashlight, obviously one of the biggest one will be camping, right? That's a big market. So if I were to go after camping, this market is already, oh, oh, yeah, I'm going after the United States. Well, this market is still like 42 million right now. I hope that Facebook is not being wonky to me. Yes, Facebook is being wonky to me, so I'm gonna refresh this right now. I'm gonna reload this so I can actually get that number to go down. Uh, I'm going to start over. I'm just going to choose conversion. And then I'm going to choose purchase. All right. Everyone who lived in this location, United States, 
remove it lucky you guys I'm like doing this all over again so you guys can actually see what I'm doing at a faster pace English all all right and here I'm gonna go after camping all right so now when I go after camping okay so there's something wrong with Facebook right now so when I go after camping it's gonna be a very 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 big audience size that's not what you wanted to do so here's one of the biggest targeting method that you want to use the number one targeting method for you to use when you have a new product or when you have a new sales funnel that you want to run you want to narrow down your audience to basically run flex targeting to force facebook to show your product to a smaller group of people that will most likely respond so in my case i would actually go after people that are in camping and people that basically likes to do things like uh the likes maybe camping world all right so a brand um let's see so now it hits 200,000 you see that it went from 60 million all the way to 200,000 so this is a great number to be at now you might be wondering well Fred what what is this why are you doing this for those of you who are basically new to Facebook ad well let me share with you what happened so when you advertise on Facebook Let's say that this represents your ad set, okay? I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna erase this, and here's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be hard for me to do this. I'm gonna do a white background. All right, so let's say that right now we're advertising to people who are camping. Now, there are very many reasons why people would actually express interest in camping. And as we saw earlier, this camping market is like, crazy like 60 million people so obviously if you can get 60 million people to work then obviously you're gonna make at least seven figures but right off the get-go you need to spend a lot of money in order for you to find out if camping is going to work or not so you are basically investing more in a riskier way to reduce your risk what we do is we do something called the flex targeting so we basically overlay on top another keyword and i'm going to call it the camping world so Camping World is one of the largest uh, RV camping outdoor um, um, retail store in uh, US right now. So what I do is now that I'm basically combining the two targeting together, I have a new segment of people right in between. This segment of people are going to be your targeted audience that are most likely going to respond to you. Why? Because they have to show interest in both camping and camping world. All right, let me repeat that. They have to show interest in both camping and camping world. So you're narrowing the market down even further. Like I said earlier, you have 60 million people under camping. Chances are people are just liking camping because their friend maybe just went camping and you liked, and you liked it, and that's really it. But you yourself may not even actually like camping or even go to do any campaign. But if you actually overlay another interest on top of it to force Facebook to show to the new audiences to only see basically people to basically see your ad, only the ones that actually express interest in happen in camping world, then you are going to dramatically reduce your risk. And again, we got to invest wisely because we are trying to get an ROI right out of Facebook. So that's what you wanted to do. You want to actually use this number one targeting method for a new product, which we call the flex targeting. And you do this by simply narrowing the audience down. Now, next, expand interest when it may increase conversion at a lower cost. What this really is, is that Facebook will then add in these recommended keywords when they see that you are getting results. This is something that you don't want it to do, okay? We removed this, and the reason why is that, again, we want true data. We want to micromanage our data to see exactly where we are generating our sale, and we need to invest our money wisely. So we want to actually eliminate this check mark because at the end of the day, if you have this check mark, you don't know if it's Camping World that's actually generating you the profit or it's RV camping, right? So you wanna uncheck that. Next, let's talk about placement. By automatic, your ads are going to be shown everywhere. You don't want to take Facebook's recommendation and go after automatic placement, okay? It's sad that Facebook wants everyone to do recommended, um, and recommended never really sees result. The reason why is because under automatic placements, you are your ads are going to be showing an audience network, Instagram, Facebook newsfeed, Facebook instant article, and also Facebook right-hand column. 
You don't want to show all those. You want to actually have one placement at a time per asset. So again, you can micromanage your data. In this case, we have to always go after mobile first. I love going after mobile and I always go after mobile first. And I eliminate Instagram, I eliminate audience network, and I even eliminate instant articles. So we primarily just go after mobile newsfeed, okay? That is the most highest converting ad placement ever on Facebook right now. So you just wanna go after mobile newsfeed. Then scroll down to the very bottom, like myself, I always do $5 a day. And down here, for any of you that are advanced marketer, okay? If you are already running your Facebook ad, you can actually see your attribution window on your conversion window. And I can tell you, if you are selling a product that is around a $30 to $50 range, all your conversions are 95% of your conversions are your sale. And even if you're running a lead, for lead, it's basically 100%. All that is gonna happen within one day. You get to choose one day, seven day, and 28 days. So what Facebook does is that Facebook will actually optimize your ad based on the conversion window. And if you have a longer conversion window, then it's gonna take longer to actually have the full algorithm at play. So for you, you wanna go after one day. A majority of you guys watching this video, I'm pretty confident to say that one day is going to be sufficient for majority of you guys. So just go after one day. Then click on continue. This is where you create your ad. Now, when you're creating your ad, the best thing that you want to do, um, again, again, this is basically the best practice. When you are running, when you're setting up your ad, obviously you basically have, um, in this, you only get to choose one ad. But what you should be doing is you should be testing three different ads at the same time. And I would even test like different formats, a carousel ad, a single image or a single video ad. And that's really the best way to do. Now a carousel ad is basically an ad that basically looks like this. It has an ad and it has text and then it has like different images that people can scroll around. So that's what a carousel ad is. So it works really effective. <coughs> it's a scroll scrollable image <coughs> and it's effective for uh, product ads. The other one that's very, very well known that majority of people are using right now it's basically a single image ad, okay? A single image ad, and the other one is basically a video ad, so I don't have to explain what that is. So in my case, if I were to run the tactical flashlight, I would actually go after the first ad to go after the single image, all right? And then I will upload a 1,200 by 628 pixel image, okay? Now, obviously, for some of you guys, um, I personally use Photoshop. That's what I use. Um, but some of you guys, you guys can actually use like canva.com uh, to create your own ad. Um, it's really up to you. It's a very easy tool to use. But myself, I'm just really good at Photoshop. Well, I'm not really good at Photoshop. I just love Photoshop. So I'm just going to use Photoshop. And then I'm just going to do a new one. 1,200 by 628 pixel. Oops. That's the wrong size. 1,200 by 628. All right, this is how the ad looks like. And let's say if I'm going to be selling this ad, um, I want a, this one works really great. All right, I'm just going to do a hack. I'm going to drag this image here. And then I'm going to drag this image over here. All right, and I'm just going to open this up. And then, oops. I want to make this back bigger. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into an ad. Um, and then I want to actually show the comparison. Obviously, this is very, very important. I want to show the comparison of this. Wow, it's very, very strong light. I'm going to copy this over here. All right. And then I'm actually going to... Okay, I'm gonna do this a little bit faster so we don't waste time. But again, I'm basically crafting an ad right now to uh, run on Facebook. Now, one of the most important things that you need to understand when you're running an ad on uh, Facebook is that the image really attracts the person, okay? So if you have some nice images, it really attracts uh, the person on clicking on your ad. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it over here. and I'm gonna write some text on it. 
And again, your text needs to be 20% of your ad. They did, Facebook did remove the 20% um, at text rule, but it kind of still apply. If there's still too much text, it will basically show your ad less, okay? So here I'm gonna make something powerful. I'm gonna say, um, um, if we're doing basically a trip bar, what we call free plus shipping, um, you can actually say free tactical flashlight. I'm gonna make this smaller. Free tactical flashlight. Just pay shipping. All right, so you can do something like that. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Or, it's too big, I'm just gonna do 50, all right. So you can do that, or you can basically do some crazy marketing message on it. So I'm gonna say basically, um, I'm gonna say this flashlight, this tactical flash, ah, I'm gonna do that. Um, get this free tactical flashlight for free, yada, yada, yada. It looks too plain, so I'm going to do some work on it. I'm going to... Okay. And then... I'm just going to add a layer, add this on it, turn this into white. And then turn this over here. Zooming in, all right, zooming back out. And then free tactical flashlight, just pay shipping. And then I'm actually going to, you know what? I want a different color. Um, this color is obviously, I love to use contrast color from Facebook so that it really attracts the person's eye. So I'll use this one, save this. I'm gonna call it tactical. Tactical. All right, now I'm going back into Facebook. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to upload that image. Tactical, Ta -da. there you go. And I'm gonna change it to a random Facebook page. I'm gonna use Fret Lamb. And then you put in the website URL and I'm just gonna to randomly put one right now so you guys can get what's happening. And then here, the headline, headline is basically where it is over here, okay? So I'm gonna say free, um, order yours now, okay? And then on here, what I'm gonna say is the text is the second most important part. After the image, the text is always the most important part. So what I'm gonna write here is, I'm gonna say um, this um, innovative tactical flashlight is 10x stronger than your traditional light. We're giving away 197 of these for you to try. Just pay shipping. All right, and all we have to do is just say shop now. So we want to be specific about the call to action so people know exactly what they need to do. And then you can also add in different words on here. So you can basically say, um, this is uh, free for free for a limited time. Just pay shipping and handling. All right, and then display URL. And all you have to do is simply just price order. Now, another app that I would also run, you also, you need to keep in mind, this needs to be a powerful text to attract people. So this is one. Another one that I can do is like I say, free giveaway. This Tactical flashlight is so powerful that it may blind um, attackers, okay? Um, for a limited time, we're giving away 100 of these for you to try. Just pay shipping. Order yours below. All right, and then simply place order and you are basically done and good to go. Then you basically let data 
tell you the story right afterward. So I really hope that this video training really helped you out on understanding the structure of a Facebook ad, understanding the marketing objective, and also how to really set up the Facebook ad the correct way, especially if you are new to Facebook advertising. Now again, setting up the Facebook ad is just the first part. The second part that's the most important part is how to optimize your Facebook ad. So if you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, you guys will actually see an upcoming video training that I'm gonna show you on how you should be optimizing your Facebook ads. So again, setting up is the easy part. When it comes to optimizing, it's actually one of the most important part to make or break your uh, your success of your business all right so other than that i really hope you enjoyed this training right below this video obviously subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to hear more about facebook ad online ads uh, google ads and um, internet entrepreneurship all those other good stuff please be sure to subscribe to my channel and comment below on telling me your feedback on what you like about this video what you don't like about this video because at the end of the day i want to actually create more video training to make sure that you guys learn all the things that you need to know when it comes to internet entrepreneurship other than that if you are very interested in running your own e-commerce store from a to z using Facebook and inventory arbitrage to run your Facebook advertising campaign and make profits out of it. Again, there's a video, you can actually click on the link. Um, it should be somewhere on this video right now. Click on it and you can actually download what we call the Zero Up Lite. It's a 10 part video trading cash course for e-commerce. And just click on there, sign up, and you can actually get access to my 10 part video training where I use Facebook to actually run an e-commerce store. And it is actually built for beginners, beginner friendly way. So if you wanna learn how to do it, click on, um, it should be somewhere on the bottom over here. Click on it and I hope to see you guys inside there. Other than that, again, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you guys have any comments, any questions, feel free to actually comment below. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this video training. Other than that, again, we will be having more video releases coming up all about internet entrepreneurship, online marketing, how to make basically profits online, how to run a small business with online ads, all those other great stuff. But if you want to be the first to know about it, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time.